This video is designed to help you start an architecture business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's an architecture business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful architecture business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. You already know that you must be a certified and licensed architect before you can set up your own practice. In the US, you'll need to be accredited by the National Architectural Accrediting Board NAAB. Once these licenses and accreditations are out of the way, it's time to focus on laying the groundwork for your new architectural firm. Here are some preliminary requirements you'll need to consider, establish business purpose and identity. This is an important requirement because it will help you formulate the right strategy and approach for your new business. Take a pen and paper and write down your answer to these questions. What types of projects and clients do you want to focus on? Are you planning to focus more on design or on business management? Are you planning to start solo or form a partnership? What are your core business goals? Are you looking to employ staff? What permits do you need? Do you need an office or can you and your team work remotely? How and where will you secure financing? Costs. Even if starting your business as a sole proprietorship, there are still unavoidable startup costs. The actual amount needed to start your own architectural firm depends on several factors, including the location of the business, the business entity structure, your financial goals, the size of the business, computer hardware and software, website development and maintenance, marketing and branding expenses, workspace equipment and furniture, cost of licenses and permits, business plan. A detailed business plan is absolutely vital, as it serves as your roadmap to success. Whenever things are unclear, or you find yourself losing sight of your goals, your business plan will serve as your reference point. It will help keep you grounded and on track. However, just because you're a brilliant architect or interior design genius, doesn't automatically mean that you can write a quality business plan. Consult with business development experts, to help you organize your ideas into actionable strategies. Consider hiring an expert for the writing as well to save time and effort. Business Insurance In addition to general business insurance, practicing architects need professional liability insurance to protect themselves and their companies. You might also need to get liability insurance for your employees, especially if they will be traveling to job sites and handling large projects. Equipment and Software To get your architecture firm up and running, you need the usual tools of the trade. You don't have to go on an all-out shopping spree, but whether you're working from home or in the office, there are certain pieces of equipment and software you absolutely need. These include, computers, design software, printer, furniture and furnishings, plotter, internet connection, telephone connection. Because you're just starting out, you'll want to keep your equipment expenses low. You don't need the latest Mac or a full seat of AutoCAD just yet. Start small and purchase upgrades from there when you've landed a few solid clients. That being said, do not skimp on quality, especially when it comes to equipment you intend to use for a long time. Things like your computer, office chair, desk, printer, etc., are items that you can expect to use for the next 5 to 10 years. If you have to spend a little extra now to get quality items, do so. It's better than shelling out money for repairs or replacements down the line. Website. Long gone are the days when you could launch a startup without a dedicated website. A well-designed website is the foundation of your firm's online presence. It's where your prospective clients will go when they want to learn more about your architectural practice. It's also the best platform to display your best works and attract new business. There's a lot that goes into successful website design. It will help to provide detailed design inputs based on your branding, but the actual web design and development process is something you should leave to the pros. Even though websites have gotten a lot easier to build, there are just so many other things that you could be doing with your time. Dedicated team. You can't do it all. And you shouldn't either. Succeeding as a business owner means knowing that you'll need help, and knowing exactly what you'll need help with at the time. Focus on your own strengths and build a team around specific skill sets, where you may be lacking. This might take some time to figure out, especially in the early stages where everything seems to be coming at you all at once. But you'll be able to figure it out if you keep working at it. Even if you're not onboarding them full-time, it pays to have a dedicated team on your speed dial, so they can quickly come in and get things moving. With that in mind, build your team around these skills, design, it's likely you already have this one covered. But design inspiration is limitless and so it never hurts to get several great ideas flowing. Project management, 
Once those new projects start rolling in, you'll need someone who is skilled in project management. They should be able to streamline processes and help you meet the expectations of your clients. Business development, someone who can identify growth opportunities and potential threats in the industry is always a great addition to a business team. Marketing, this is a distinct and incredibly crucial role. For your architecture firm to thrive, it must have a steady flow of potential clients in the pipeline. Financial planning, this is another crucial skill that's not covered in architecture school. Cash flow essentially determines whether your business is still going strong over the next five years or non-existent. The next part of the video is not specific to the architecture business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the architecture business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful architecture business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? 
Do you know what financial reports should be prepared and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3, this is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion. If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running an architecture business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free architecture business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.